Right, if you were a gamer back in 2017 and watched a lot of YouTube, and I mean a lot of it, you might remember a game that released back then called Bendy and Ink Machine. It was a pretty big game back then, and it was held as one of the best of 2017 alongside Resident Evil 7 and Cuphead. But nowadays, it's not even really talked about. And when it is, it's usually talked in negativity. Why is that? Well, you will see after I review Benny and the Ink Machine. Oh, I'm not going to enjoy this one. How do I stop recording again? So, the only bit of brief history I found was that the game was based on the Bioshock series, believe it or not. Which isn't too strange, given the game's similarities. And the other thing I found out was that it was just originally done for fun. And was not originally going to be the way it became nowadays. It almost makes this review seem cruel. Well... Let's move to the story. <laughs> so the story, or the stories, if you want to be smart about this, is this. Right, before I get to it, I'm breaking these up into the chapters of the game. Which means I'm going to speed right through them and not talk about the full story. Because this game is a chapter episodic release. Okay, got it, good. Chapter 1. So you are someone named Henry, and you are invited by an old friend and boss, Joey True, who used to run a place that makes cartoons. Turns out the place, which is known only as Joey True Studios, I <laughs> know, what a name for a studio, am I right? Have been out of business since colour was introduced. And you find the thing he wanted to show you. An ink machine. Why does he have it? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And after turning it on, you find a monster slash ink demon. Yes, he's actually called an ink demon. Named Bendy. And it starts chasing you. Or at least I think it does. Huh. Okay. You find a satanic circle, or something, I don't know, I don't do satanic rituals for a living, and you get knocked out. Okay, is that enough? I'm exhausted already. No, man, you have to look at all of them. Okay, fine. Chapter 2. You wake up to find out you have been blocked from the exit. There's a guy named Sammy Lawrence who starts stalking you like a creep. And you nearly get, and you nearly get sacrificed to Bendy. And you finally get chased by him. And then you meet a wolf named Boris or something. Chapter 3. Boris and you end up trying to escape. And you end up meeting someone named Alice Angel. Who is pretty messed in the head. And then you end up doing a task or two for her. to, t <laughs> And then you take a lift to the surface. And then she betrays you to take Boris and take out his heart. As I said, pretty messed in the head. Am I done yet? No, there are two more chapters. But chapter four. You end up trying to save Boris. Do some games. Go on a little while or whatever, blah, 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 and Boris is dead. Flap. Well, he's undead, which just means he's out to kill you now. Double crap. You kill Boris, and just before Alice kills you, she gets killed by Alison, someone who also voices Alice, or voiced Alice back in the days of Joey Drew's studio. Okay, she's the good Alice. And she has her own Boris named Tom. Hooray? Alright man, one more chapter to go. Finally! Chapter 5! In this chapter, you and Alison and Tom end up fighting the Searchers and the Lost Souls. Both are introduced in chapter 2 and 4. And you end up going against Bendy one final time. And shows him a will called The End. And you end up killing him and then you meet up with Joey. And then the game starts all over. What the hell? Is that an ending? Is there even an ending? 
Are we dead? Is this our hell? What even is this game? And you're done. Thank God. This has to be one of, if not the most confusing story. My most confusing story since that stupid FNAF game. Yeah, I called it stupid hit pit. And I'm sorry for anyone who likes the story. But I just don't get it. It was one of the most confused and uninspired stories of the 2010 decade. And the shameful thing is, it was so hyped up. It was so hyped up. Right, so this is a really repetitive game. I highly suggest you don't pick this one up for its gameplay. The movement speed is slow. Like, really slow, especially in the ink. The hit detection is almost not there. Like, look at this. Look at this. And, of course, Bendy, who appears so very little in the game. Oh, God. I didn't write that bit in. Okay, who appears very little in the game. The most you see him is in Chapter 3 and 5. And even then, he appears, like, twice, maybe three times when they're feeling very spicy. In the chapters, remember, this game is about Bendy, and he is almost not in the game. Honestly, I went through this game, and half the time, it did not feel like Bendy was in it. It felt like he wasn't. And the puzzles are bland as well. Just, why is this game like this? Gosh! If I'm being honest, these are the best part of the game. The atmosphere. The lack of colours. It's just so creepy to me. And that's about it. No, seriously, there is still not much to talk about here. The graphics are just the best bit. What else can I say? Look, I know. It was 2017. You can't judge it that much. Except... I can. This was released at the same time as Insane Trilogy, Cuphead and Resident Evil 7. And people had to spend money to get each individual chapters. I know, I know, once again, Poppy's Playtime, it's also having individual chapters. I'm not supporting them on that one. I'm sorry, developers, but don't just make individual chapters and make people buy each one of them. They should be able to spend money to get their season pass, not just you know, not just the chapters in themselves. But nowadays, you can get the collection for pretty cheap. Right now, it's on sale for six pound. But that is not the point. Is this game? Oh, sorry. Actually, I don't know if it'll be still the same price by the time I upload this. <laughs> Stupid me. It's still pretty cheap. This game was bland, okay? And it did set up expectations that were too high. So, overall, I'm sorry fans of Bendy, but this one gets the game of soul of garbage. Yes, I'm copying Ida Mac on that one, mostly because, you know, Everyone's copying an F1 nowadays, okay? Everyone is. Right, so that was my review on Bendy and the Ink Machine. It's an interesting game, I will admit. And I did enjoy some of it. It's not that bad. Like, everyone's saying it's the worst and it's a disgrace to game, and I don't think it is. Okay, I don't think it's a disgrace. Do I think it's a good game? No, not particularly. Do I think it deserves any rewards or awards? No, not at all. This game don't deserve much. Maybe a little ah or ee, but not much apart from that. So in the end, that was my review. I've been Gaming. I'll see you next time. Bye.